Okay, welcome to the Rock Your Dream Body and Dream Life interview series. Today, I am interviewing Brittany Castro. Brittany is a certified financial planner, chartered retirement planning counselor, accredited asset management specialist, entrepreneur, and speaker, and she's the founder and CEO of Financially Wise Women, a Los Angeles-based financial planning firm for women. She specializes in working with busy professionals and entrepreneurial women who are passionate about life and want to gain clarity around their money. Brittany's mission is to help women plan and create the life of their dreams free from anxiety about money. And she's known for her innovative, non-judgmental, compassionate approach to financial planning. She's been featured on CNN, CNBC, The Wall Street Journal, The New York Times, CBS, KTLA, and Glamour, L, Marie Claire, and a whole bunch of other places as well. And away from the office, you can actually find Brittany working out, which we've done many times together, yeah. drinking coffee, green smoothies, and playing with her dog, Aria, and of course, dancing, which we've also done together. So welcome, Brittany. Thanks, Sheila, for having me. Yeah, I'm so glad that we're having this chance to sit down and talk because I feel like we've had these conversations together, you and I, before, um, but it's such an important conversation for women to have around money and building their, not only their wealth consciousness, but a level of ease around money. Because I think a lot of times we get very caught up in just trying to keep up and a lot of people are either living paycheck to paycheck or feeling like they only have enough to sort of like cover their nut, as I like to say, and they don't feel that they have the freedom to be able to go out and do the things that they want to do. And so while this series is, you know, centered around the idea of rocking your dream body, I want to talk about these other areas that are so important as well, because they're all connected. So to start, why don't you share a little bit about how you personally have sort of overcome your challenges when it comes to your finances and gotten to this place where you're, you're living your version of your ideal life? Okay, yeah. Um, so my story is a little bit unique in, in the fact that I'm a financial planner too. So, um, you know, for me, learning about money came as part of my career growth. I started at a financial planning firm right out of college, and while I always was like good with money and math, I never really envisioned myself being a financial planner or going on this whole journey of self-discovery with my own money. But through my career, especially at that first company, I learned a lot about um, financial planning, how to manage my money, how to really invest it and grow it. But also, I learned that if you don't have the emotional side and the holistic side with money down, the plan that you put in place just won't work long term. Mm -hmm. And um, that I experienced myself because after about five years of working at that firm, I was quote unquote successful financially speaking on paper in the corporate America, but I wasn't happy. I really wasn't living my ideal life. I wasn't authentic. I didn't really feel excited, you know, about life and to continue on this path that I was on. So I started this whole self discovery of figuring out what do I want to do with my life? Like what's really important to me? What do I value most? Where do I naturally like fall into work and, and where do I find enjoyment with work and learn all the other sides of the money too. So I started to read and dive into all these books around just like the emotional sides of money, the universal truths of money, how to think abundantly with money. And it was by learning that and going through my own journey of um, it just not working in the other way, I began to formulate this new version of how I could use money to live my dream life and be with it in a whole new way and go through those same challenges and concerns we all have to go through with our money, which is like, how do I? stop living in the scarcity mentality or maybe, you know, stressed out all the time with making more money or managing the money or worried that I'm never going to have enough money to reach my retirement goal and operate more from this place of abundance. Like, okay, I'm always supported. I always have the money I need. Even when I don't think it's coming, it comes. And instead of just operating out of this 
negative space with it. How do I overcome these beliefs that I was trained to, to have around money and formulate my own concepts with money that will that serve me and continue to serve me much more effectively moving forward. So, you know, going through my own journey and honestly also helping a lot of the women I work with and just like talking about money and studying money. I've, I've learned a lot from other people too, who have done it and who think about money in this abundant, healthy way. And I started to pick up what they were doing or what they were thinking and, and bring it into my own life. And even if it didn't always feel um, like it was the case, I kind of did that act as if mentality. Um, so even if it was like, okay, I, I still feel a little concerned about money or I'm worried about money right now, I'm going to act as if I'm not worried and, you know, really say, okay, that fear, that negative emotion I have right now, I'm going to explore it, don't wonder where it came from, but also realize it's not mine and I don't have to keep it anymore and begin to you know, really become more and more aware of the thoughts and feelings I had and work with them if they weren't always the ones I wanted to keep. So it's a lifelong journey, though. I mean, I'm on it still, just like we all are. And I'm constantly learning, constantly growing. But it's it's great to be able to go through those things and then bring it to the people I work with. Yeah. And I think that's such a good point to mention when you say like, it's a lifelong journey because there's always room for expansion. There's always room for us to, you know, up level at every stage of the game, whether we're talking about our health goals or we're talking about our money goals. I think that we can sometimes get really stuck on this idea of when I reach that number on the scale or when I reach that number in my bank account, then I will be happy. And I think that people like you, like what you're saying about being able to find this balance where we are able to take care of ourselves and provide that security for ourselves, but also not put our ha happiness at some stage in the future where we're like, well, when I get there, then I'll be able to do these things with my life or then I'll feel secure. It's about finding that security now while you're on your way to that. So how do you help your clients develop that sort of a relationship with their money? Like what's the first step for someone that wants to get started? The first step I always suggest is to do uh, your money story. And I teach this in my workshops, in my online money class. And what I mean by that is to take time to really explore all the past experiences you've had with your money up until this point. So I walk them through this whole activity where they think of their very, very first money memory. So like, you know, sometimes you have to close your eyes, like settle yourself, meditate and think like, okay, what was the first time I experienced money? Maybe you touched money, saw money, heard about money. For me, it was when I was three years old, I had this piggy bank, it was, it was the Cabbage Patch doll piggy bank. And I remember specifically sitting in my room, my mom gave me a bag of pennies and I put the pennies in the piggy bank. And that was my first experience with money. Um, so you want to do that for yourself and really like think about all those experiences starting from the very first money memory and kind of work your way from past to present. Um, I have them actually draw out a symbol or some sort of image to represent that money in a circle. So then you like have all this, these little images coming up in the circle and you see, oh, here's like my money story, all these little experiences um, represented by images. And then once you have that and you put down as many as you can, you look and you explore, was that a positive memory and experience with money or was it a negative? Maybe on your money diagram, you have like an experience in which you remember specifically your parents fighting about money over the dinner table and you like drew out a little table with your parents and maybe they're yelling. Well, that might be a negative money memory. So you would put a negative sign by it. Maybe there was another memory, money memory where you got your first job and your first paycheck and you remember how excited you were to go out and make money. So that was a positive experience you had. So you would go through this activity and really get clear about your money story and see how many of these experiences have been negative and how many of them have been positive. And the reason you do that is one, you're going to get so much clarity around kind of just all your past experiences with money, how they're shaping, how you deal with money today. And chances are you'll see that, you know, a majority of people do this activity and they have neg more negative than positive. And then you'll begin to see, well, okay, maybe it's not 
so bad that I, you know, had that debt or credit card and I used it unwisely in college, you know, and you begin to forgive yourself or maybe it's not so bad that your parents fought about money. Yeah, maybe it was stressful for you growing up, but then you could realize, oh, that's not my story. That was their story and I don't have to keep it anymore. Like that you really can begin the exploration process to see what concepts are coming from what stories in the past and do your work to change them or shift them today and moving forward. So you create that positive relationship that you want with your money. Yeah. I think that, I mean, that's similar to what I do with my clients as well is when you start to analyze and, and sort of have this third party viewpoint of like what your beliefs are, you can start to see that like, Oh, I picked that belief up from this person or this experience, or, you know, sometimes well-meaning people that are trying to protect us, they, they give us these beliefs. And when we start to see like, Oh, that was that person's belief, then we can kind of give it back. And we can let go and be like that, you know, although that belief may have served me, it doesn't serve me anymore. And that's where we can grow and expand to these new levels where we can receive and open ourselves up to those higher and higher levels. So that's awesome. I love that exercise. I feel like that's, you know, so healing. Thank you. Yeah, it's a good one. So for, for a lot of women, you know, like we don't either money is sort of like an, an anxious topic or sometimes we're not very connected to it. Sometimes it's something that we just really don't pay a lot of attention to. And especially when it comes to a budget, a lot of people I think don't really have budgets or they're, they don't like budgets. Like we have these well-meaning, you know, like these good intentions of setting budgets, but when it comes down to it, it just doesn't happen or we don't stick to it. How do you recommend that we can start to create budgets from a mindset of empowerment that feel like something that is exciting, that have that like fun vibe to them versus that like, oh, my budget, it's, it's restricting me. I can't spend, you know, that kind of a mode. One thing in particular I do is I teach clients to do weekly money dates. And what this is, it's just a dedicated time in your calendar. Let's say it's Thursday at 5 p.m. Every Thursday at 5 p.m., you have a date and you date your money. <laughs> and so what you're doing in the date is you're reviewing your budget, you're updating it, you know, logging your expenses or reviewing your expenses depending on which, which, uh, which budgeting system you choose. Um, and then you review like, oh man, I spent a lot of money going out to eat last week. Okay, this upcoming week, I'm going to make sure I go to the grocery store and do some more meal prep. Or, you know, maybe you know you're going to, you're saving for a trip. So you look at your budget and say, okay, you know, I'm going to start saving another $100 every month into my uh, travel savings account. So today I'm going to get that started. I'm going to set it up so it's an automatic savings. Like in your budget or in your weekly money date, you're updating your budget, you're like reviewing your goals, and you're dealing with your money. And I know it might not be easy in the beginning. You might have that stress and overwhelm and anxiety feeling come over you. You might feel bad or you might feel guilty that you spent so much money eating out. But really, this is the time to be with it and shift it and bring that positive, exciting energy into it because it really is a matter of you changing it. Like I always say, you are the one who brings whatever emotion it is to your money. So if you're constantly like, oh, I'm so stressed out, I have to budget my money, or I hate budgets, or you're doing this whole thing with it, unless you decide to change it, it's always going to be that way for you. Mm -hmm. So why I suggest weekly money dates is because hopefully if you're date going on dates, it's a little bit more exciting, you know? So it's just like you would want to bring a good energy into a date with your lover, you want to bring that same type of good energy into the date with your money because money is just another relationship you're going to have for the rest of your life. So you got to figure out how to be with it and use it in the most efficient way to serve you. Um, and it really is, you know, up to you to change that and bring whatever excitement you want into it. And like I said, it might not be easy right away, but just like anything, the more you practice it and the more you commit to it, the easier it becomes. And you'll be so surprised when my clients do these money dates. Oh my gosh, the, the results they see in their financial life is tremendous. All of a sudden they start to make more money. Mm -hmm. Like 
jobs come in, better paying salaries, or if they're self-employed, they get more clients. Um, random things happen, like, you know, they'll just get, I don't know, like free money, you know, they'll get like offers for free things or like one client in particular, like she had a lot of her debt forgiven, you know, they just sent a letter saying that we're going to forgive this debt. And I'm not surprised anymore just because I've been doing it for so long that I know the power of when you put the right time and energy into changing something, the universe wants to work with you. So once you put that into it, you know, you're showing you have integrity with your money, then things will begin to line up to support you in your efforts. So they're very powerful. And I think they're a great way to start to start to um, change these feelings or emotions you might have with your money. Yeah, I remember when I was younger, and even in college, I was I had money dates like that. And then I got married and my ex, my ex husband, he handled a lot of the finances. And so when we went through the divorce and I started doing my own finances again, and you helped me with setting these money dates for myself, I think it really gave me my power back because it was a situation where I was like, Oh, that's not my thing. I don't like doing that. And, and I had resistance towards it. Like I was like, I don't know, like, I don't want to have to focus on that. But then when I took it back and I started having those weekly money dates, and sometimes it would be, you know, every other week. But when I started putting that sort of attention and love towards my finances, it's so true. You start making more money. It comes from these unforeseen, you know, circumstances. Or even if you have a salary type position, at least it gives you that awareness where you can start looking at it and saying, realistically, either I want to make more money. What am I going to do? Or, you know, what types of things can I do from an empowered state to start having these smart goals? And that's something you work with your clients on as well. Can you talk a little bit more about that, like smart goals? Yeah, I think a lot of times people have these goals for themselves, like I want to retire or I want to travel or I want to launch a business, but then they're never clear. Okay, well, when? Like, what does that actually mean? How much does it cost? And, you know, creating smart goals um, in any aspect of your life, but specifically in the financial side, is going to allow you to actually work toward achieving the goal. So mm -hmm. smart just means specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, and timely. And a lot of times when I work with my clients, I help them formulate the smart goals because sometimes they come to me and they're like, well, I don't really know, like, how much should I save or how much does this average, you know, you know, what's the average cost of this? And so I'll give them a frameworks to help them better understand um, kind of, you know, just based on my experience, what I see when it comes to these different goals that they're working on. But once you formulate the goal, then you could put a plan in place to reach the goal and then you could feel good that you're reaching your goals. So I know it sounds so basic to create smart financial goals, but I'm telling you, when you actually take the time, think about it, write them down, work with a planner to make them happen, then that's when you're actually going to see the success and the results that you want to see. But so often people get even just like overwhelmed or, you know, afraid. They let fear hold them back from even making that first step to like allowing themselves to have goals with their money. You know, I think a lot of times, especially with women, they, we like, limit ourselves you know I work with a lot of women who are like well I don't know you know I'm just I kind of want that but that you know it's like we're women you know we're trained to like not want things it's like no if you want it make it happen and know that you can be able to travel you can retire you can launch a business and you know it's up to you if you want it or not I'll you know you tell me the goals and I'll help put the plan in place and then we could see okay maybe you work on it and you realize it's not for you. And that's okay too. You know, I think it's like also too allowing yourself to try things and not like it's set in stone forever. And, you know, if it doesn't work, you don't have to stay on that path. But it's giving yourself the flexibility and freedom to want what you want, create a plan, be clear about it so that you can actually make it happen. Yeah, I think for a lot of women, there's a lot of guilt and shame around the idea of investing in yourself or splurging on yourself or doing those things that really light you up or would be supportive of you because we don't like to spend money on ourselves, especially if we have families like kids and all these other expenses. So what would what advice would you give to a woman who's like, okay, 
I know there are certain things that I should be doing. I know I should be putting away this amount of money for my savings. I know I should be putting, you know, away into my 401k or my investments. And there are these other things that kind of light, they, that do light me up like travel or little splurges that make my day better or, you know, how they like the coffee every day or, or so how do you balance that between these things that, that really make life meaningful and planning for the future and putting money towards both when you maybe don't have a lot to go in either direction? I would say first things first, be very clear about the budget that helps you balance and manage it because I think a lot of people don't even have clarity around their monthly bills and expenses. So then they are automatically saying, no, I can't afford it or you know what I mean, but they're, they're spending money on things that really not value, you know, of any value to them. So be honest with yourself. Be really clear. Where is your money going every month? And is that in alignment with what you're saying you want? Like if you want to travel, but all your money is going to, I don't know, um, cable or eating out too much or th memberships that you don't even need or use, you know, then be honest, cut those things back or out and shift so you can put some money aside every month toward your travel and your vacation that you want. Um, another thing that I found too helps with this area to allow women to spend more money on themselves is to set up their bills so that their bills are getting paid automatically. They're saving, even if it's saving a little bit as $50 a month, um, toward their financial goals. So the, the saving should be automatic as well. And then you have this remaining amount. So, you know, whatever that amount is, you have to use it for all your variable and fun things like food, clothes, you know, manicures, pedicures. And then out of that number, like kind of make a list and say, what are your non-negotiables? Maybe your non-negotiable is a manicure every week or a massage or getting coffee. Like, you know, you can't have it all, uh, you know, if there's a limit here, but until you make more money to make, you know, be able to spend those things, choose what do you want to spend money on first and know that the more you work these numbers and the more you have integrity with money and if you choose to make more money, you can then have it all and spend more money on these things. Um, but gaining clarity is key and just really figuring out what are your non-negotiables and trusting that if you take care of yourself then this whole thing will be much better in the long run i mean i see a lot of women who are just working 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 managing the kids working taking care of the finances and it to me outside looking in it's like a recipe for disaster you know that it's almost like they're killing themselves and you know, by working smarter and not harder, you can make these shifts. But I know because it took me that trust to actually think, okay, I can take money and go get a massage every week and not feel guilty about it because that was something for me I needed to do and I wanted to do to feel my best. But it, it did take me that learning curve to get over my own roadblocks with it. Like, oh my God, I feel so guilty I'm spending money. I should be saving more money. But then I realized, no, if I'm going to be able to operate at the level I operate and do this long term, this is something I need. And this is something that brings me pleasure and joy in my weeks and in my days. So I, I want to be able to treat myself this way. Like I deserve to be treated this way. And this is why I work hard. So I can um, use my money this way. Yeah. Cause it's not just about working hard every single day to like get to that, you know, finish end line. Goal. What is the end goal? I mean, if you drop dead and never reach the end goal, that's, <laughs> that's not what, very I mean, fun. No. Yeah. 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 So, so what you're saying is, is be conscious, have awareness and clarity around where you're spending your money, put towards, put the money towards the non-negotiables and at the same time, do the mindset work that's going to expand your wealth consciousness to allow more money to flow in so that then you can keep up that momentum in that direction. Yes, exactly. Awesome. So just to kind of wrap up, I'd love to hear a little bit about like one area where you feel like you've had some compassion for yourself around money. Like you shared a little bit about that, like spending on massages or things like that. But if you were to sort of think of a woman, you know, like the advice that you would give her based on your experience of like maybe being hard on yourself and then realizing, no, you know, it's better to just be, be 
be easy on yourself, what would you say? One area in particular um, was when I started, when I left that firm and I started this journey of entrepreneurship, I didn't know it was entrepreneurship. I think it was like <laughs> before this word was so sexy and common, you know, it was like, oh, I'm just leaving this one position and I'm going to go out into this unknown and work toward building my own business, which I didn't see the model I wanted. It didn't exist yet. So I was like really creating something that I felt intuitively in my heart to, to create, but I used my cash cushion. I took out money out of my 401k and it was really hard for me because I'm a financial planner and this is like what you're not supposed to do. And yet I was doing it because I was like, well, I saved all this money and I want to now use it to launch this business. I have to go for it. And that was my own decision, my own risk tolerance to do that and make that leap. But for, I would say, two years, I struggled with feeling guilty or like a fraud because I had done what everybody in the industry says never to do. And then I realized, you know, I have to forgive myself and no one here is perfect. You know, where, who, who said that, you know, it has to be so black and white. And I don't think anything in life is black and white and linear. You know, it's kind of like you grow and then you learn and then you make mistakes and learn from them. And now looking back, I give that younger self uh, version of myself a lot more compassion because I don't, I carried that, you know, feeling for a few years, like I said, and I didn't have to because really I don't regret it one bit. I'm now rebuilding, you know, the cash cushion and the retirement accounts from a much more solid place, a much more authentic foundation that I think will be more sustainable long term. And I've also learned so much about myself and about money throughout this process that these tools and um, just things that I've overcome in my own financial life are so much of how I relate to clients now. You know, I can sit on the same side of the table and say, look, you have debt. Okay, I know you feel like a failure, but it's not that big of a deal. Let's figure out a game plan. Let's work through these emotions that you need to work through to get the debt paid off. But in the meantime, don't carry around this feeling because you don't need to. And I think so much of the industry is always about no, no, no. You know, you're bad, bad, bad if you have debt or do this or that. And it's like, oh, my God, you know, um, everybody has their own path and their own journey with money that they have to figure out. So it's allowed me to be a lot more compassionate with, with clients and see that it's not always black and white and that it is oftentimes messy. But when you go through those growth, pro, you know, growth stages or overcome a very hard challenge, it usually allows you a huge opportunity to create something even better and even more beautiful in your financial life and life in general. Yes. Yes, it's so true. It's like those contrasting moments or those those challenges are really what help teach us the most about ourselves and what we want for our life and to be very deliberate about it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. This was amazing. Thanks. And I, I know you have a special gift that you're offering for anyone that wants to learn more about working with you or to take this a step further. So where can they go to find that? Yeah, the URL is kind of long. It's financiallywisewomen.com backslash toolkit. Okay. So I have this amazing toolkit that everybody could sign up for. It's free. It has my ebook in there, The Nine Steps to Becoming a Financially Wise Woman. It has this amazing dream worksheet, which will help um, the listeners get more clear about what goals they have for themselves and how they're going to use the money to reach those goals. It also has a life stage checklist, which is great because I have, I think there's six checklists based on the different stages of life you might be in, like just starting out, getting married, buying a home, having a baby, and the top things you need to do in your financial life based on each one of those stages. And there's more things in the toolkit. So it's just like jam packed with tools and resources. And um, you can get that at financiallywisewomen.com backslash toolkit. And we'll have the link below the, the video as well, so they can just click on the link too. But 
Thank you so much. This was awesome. And I'm, again, so glad we were able to chat and hopefully give women a more empowered look at money and how to start really stepping into a very conscious relationship with it so that they can have their dream life. Yes. I'm so, I'm so glad you're doing this and grateful to be on. So thank you for having me. Awesome. All right. Take care, girl. And I will see everyone in the next interview.